Hey! So, just to get right into the topic, I'm a foodie. I love food. I have always loved food. Food has been an integral part of my life since I was like a young child. They used to call me the condiment queen when I was a kid because I would try to mix the different sauces and, and spices together to come up with my own flavors. One of my earliest memories as a child is being given an easy bake oven and I would use that to make little cakes and things. Um, I mean, I love food. I've always loved food to this day. I love food. But my relationship with food is a bit complicated. Um, you know, really late into my teens and my early 20s, I struggled a lot with binge eating. I struggled a ton and I think one of the reasons I did that was because I kind of got tra trapped into this diet cycle. And that's one of the things I just want to talk about. My experience with food, really, um, just body image in general and how I was able to overcome the binge eating that was really just starting to mess with me psychologically. So, you know, starting off, as I said, I loved food as a kid. I would try things. I would eat things. I would play around in the kitchen a lot. Um... But early on, I, I, I kind of got into the habit of just overeating. And I think some of this was just lack of awareness, lack of understanding. But it got to the point when I was sixth grade, I was at that time a heaviest. In sixth grade, I got to where I was like a size 16 and I was um, 170 pounds. So, um, you know, I just was not as at a healthy weight, you know, for a young girl. And so that is around the time I started my first diet. I remember it was called the grapefruit diet. And I literally ate chicken some form of a vegetable and then grapefruit with like every meal um i just it was actually at that time it was like a big thing that they were they were doing in the medical industry i actually was given given it to given it uh by a family member so i that was like my first diet and then i lost a few pounds after that and then ever since that time like i really felt man if i could lose weight doing this you know, how else could I maybe lose weight or get to a, a place that was healthier? So for me, what began as a healthy attempt of taking control of something that I felt like was out of control started to spiral, you know, over time sprawled into to bad behavior. And so, you know, because I did the grapefruit diet and then later on I tried like Weight Watchers. I tried, um, gosh, the South Beach diet. Um, I tried low carb. And so I did all these different things, but it got to the point, I think, where... I started I started to struggle you know there was a side of me that wanted to be healthy that wanted to um, get to the point where I looked in the mirror and, and was happy about how I looked and then but then there was this like kind of weird cycle that I felt like no matter how many diets I was doing I, I never really felt like I'd reached the place where I was satisfied with my results and you know it was around that time when you know i would go on these really really strict diets really strict diets where it's like you're counting carbs or calories or fat all those different things and then i may just get too hungry one day or i get really stressed or whatever and then i would just like binge and then that would and it would like sometimes those binges would be massive you're talking you know a whole box of oreos um carton of ice cream a jar of peanut butter whipped cream like all in one sitting, <laughs> like just, just crazy stuff. And I would say, I think the, the time I started noticing it, it getting kind of out of hand, it was around the time it was my early college, like my early college years. And, and by that time I had gotten to where I was, you know, exercising a little consistently. And so I may have like a binge moment, but then I would try to exercise and do different things to work it out. Um, and so like I said, by, by college years, I was at a healthier weight or I was at a, a weight that could be considered healthy, I guess, by BMI standards, if, if you, um, ascribe to that method, but psychologically, I just, something, something was off. And so really make case in point, I, I kept going into this, you know, diet and binge cycle. I would really cut back and be super strict. And then I would just overeat and then I'd feel horrible and I try to work out really, really hard and then, and then cut back. And then I would overeat and then that would cause these psychological issues and it just would, and it, it, it just got, like I said, it created, it created a problem. And I think that the biggest, the time when I really, really started to recognize like, okay, something needs to change is when it was like one particular night where I just, I just remember I literally just, I could not stop eating. Like I, I went into the pantry and I started grabbing all these things and it's like, I could not stop eating. And so for me, that was like a wake up call of like, what is going on? Like, what is, what is driving me? So, I mean, fast forward to, to a, you know, through a series of different events, I started doing some introspection. 
um, started to going through like different programs and things that were kind of helping me to identify what's going on in e um, internally. And what I identified for me is what began in a young girl as an early attempt for me to try to grab a hold of something, you know, or just try to learn healthier habits. Because when I was a young girl, that's what it was. I was just wanted to be healthier, wanted to be a happier weight. What began as that kind of spiraled into this just bad diet cycle effect. And I, and I figured out for me that my biggest trigger was emotional, that I got to the point where I was just such an emotional eater. And, you know, for me personally, and I think, I think for African American women in general, in general, I think we can struggle with this. And, and there's, you know, there's a lot of stats and things that talk about how, you know, African American women, they're most, they're more prone for certain diseases or more prone to be overweight. Some of us are more prone to be obese and there's all these studies behind it. But without even going too deeply into that, I think there's so much pressure put on us as women to, that we can have certain emotions, but other ones we can't. We can be angry. It's, you know, people are used to us being angry. We are stereotyped as being angry, but we can't necessarily be sad. There's not a place where we can be given sympathy. There's not necessarily a place where we can be considered human or, or the fullness of our emotions can be acceptable. Not, not I think, from a societal standpoint. And so I, I, I found for me there were certain emotions that I felt comfortable expressing and there was a lot that I just did not. And like I said, there's, you know, there's maybe personal reasons for that. There's, but there's also societal reasons for that. And then there's, you know, things that we experience in our community that we feel comfortable or not feeling comfortable with. And so for me, the big turning point for me literally was starting to recognize what was going on internally. What was driving my eating? What was driving my inability to control something that should be so normal? And that's when I recognized that I was not in touch with my emotions, that there was so many things going on that I just never felt the freedom to express. And so I wanted to talk about this because I feel as if, um, you know, and this is something I think for like women struggle in general, emotional eating, we've all heard of that. And I think it's, it's kind of normal, I think for everyone to have, to be a bit of an emotional eater, maybe at a really, really small scale. Like for example, you, you go to a party, you want to have a good, good time. Maybe you have a piece of cake or you go to a social event, maybe you have some wine. And so I think that's, that's healthy within reason, but when it gets to the point where it's out of control, obviously it becomes an issue. And like I said, when you live in a space or exist in a space where you are told or you feel as if your feelings are not validated or you feel like you there are certain sides of yourself that cannot be expressed or should not be expressed it creates a lot of issues and i remember sharing this with one of my you know one of my other close sisters and she was telling me how she struggled with certain things and she started to recognize that you know as a black woman she had to put up this front of oh, you know, I'm a strong, independent black woman or I'm powerful or, or, you know, I'm impervious. For her, it was almost this idea of like, I'm impervious, nothing nothing moves me. But at a certain point, we're humans. And you have to recognize, no, if you, you know, if you, you slap me, I, I my face, like I'm gonna feel that, I'm gonna hurt. You know what I mean? If you stab me, I bleed. Like we're not super, we're not super women, we're not superhero heroes. And so, again, I can say for me, that was a big, that was a, a, I think, a big piece to my emotional eating. And the more I was able to get in touch and to figure out what were my triggers, what were the emotions that I was or was not dealing with, where did I feel not only as a woman, but as African-American woman, that I could not express certain things, that really started to become a turning point where I was able to grab a hold of what had become a really bad and vicious cycle. And so... I would just say, you know, if you're a woman or if you're an African American woman where you feel like you struggle with your maybe your weight or your body image or you feel like you can't your eating gets out of control, I would say really really challenge yourself to just look internally and see if you have if you are in touch with your emotions, if you're allowing yourself to express the fullness of who you are, or if you feel like you have to suppress that. Um, because like I said, we, we are all human and we all feel certain things, but there are cultural, you know, there are expectations put on all of us. And some of those things can be healthy and many of them are, are unhealthy. And I think for African-American women, especially where there's, there's so much ag against us, right and there's so many different pressures and stressors that we experience i think it's really important to start to recognize okay where where can i be healthier what steps can i take to actually 
to heal here, to get better, to grow there or to be more in touch. Because I think just having that conversation, just being self-aware, I think is just a huge component in moving forward in general. Being self-aware is like, it's like step one in being able to heal in any capacity. So I hope I'm making sense. Um, again, I just, I just wanted to share this aspect of my journey because like I said, it's something that I struggled with, struggled with for years and I'm sure I'm not the only one. So, um, I hope this has, you know, spoken to you in some way, shape or form. As I mentioned, I am still a foodie. I love food to this day, but I just now have recognized ways to express that love in, in, in a manner that feels more healthy. And I've also recognized that there are certain foods that I eat that will tr literally trigger behavior like that will trigger behavior that wants me to excessively eat versus there's other foods where I eat that they don't have that same effect. Like I can eat it and I can say, okay, this is enough. I can walk away. And so, you know, you have to learn your body and, and know what those, those food triggers are. Um, and that's all a part of the self-awareness. But anyways, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Leave your comments in the comment section below. And thank you so much for listening if you've gotten this far. Do not forget or don't forget to uh, press the subscribe button and um, yeah, we'll talk soon. All right. Take care. Bye.